What's up, y'all? I'm Jmax. Welcome back to my channel. This is Jmax Reacts. And tonight I'm watching a video by Honest. It says, Whatever happened to A. Marie? <laughs> Let's see what he says. Early 2000s are a touchstone for modern RB. Ali released her third and final record in 2001, which would help reshape RB. Brandy would follow with her highly influential 2002 release, Full Moon. Mm -hmm. But as some of the more established RB acts began to struggle transitioning into a new millennium, a new crop of ladies would pop up. Some would prove to hold the same power and build upon a mainstream career. Others would eventually shy away from the spotlight due to various circumstances. Mm. A. Marie would become the latter. A. Marie would get her start in music after befriending producer Rich Harrison, who at that point in time was associated with his work for the iconic R&B singer Mary J. Blige. Rich and A. Marie would differ though. Together, they will usher in a new sound and aesthetic into the 2000s R&B scene. A. Marie was intent on having her R&B music intertwined with hip hop. She specifically sought out certain elements, and her and Rich had great chemistry with making music in her own words. She quickly became the new it girl on the scene, doing a few collaborations with high profile rappers such as Nas, before eventually releasing her debut single, Why Don't We Fall In Love in 2002. It's a jazzy, romantic R&B track. It was a moderate summertime hit. The song would later be sampled by Ariana Grande in 2 Chains, while A. Marie's debut album, All I Have, released in 2002, was an R&B success and even won her a Soul Train Award. It was far from a runaway smash. Still, it got pretty positive reception and helped A. Marie distinguish herself a bit amongst her peers. Rich Harrison kind of did for A. Marie what Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis did for Janet, mm -hmm. or Timbaland did for Aaliyah, mm -hmm. or in A. Marie's commercial height, it would be more comparable to what Jazzy Faye helped do for Sierra. Hit it to their specific voice and style, and give them good tracks that will complement their overall aesthetic. Between her first and second album, she continued to build momentum and collaborate with other acts, and even starred in a movie. Meanwhile, her producer was making ways with some of her peers and kind of spreading the musical output that him and Amory introduced to thousands of pop and R&B and became known for. That sound is known as go-go music. And being that go-go originates from Washington, D.C., and Amory is a D.C. girl, the match was perfect. It's a heavily percussive genre that added flair to Amory's light voice. In the meantime, Rich Harrison would produce mega hits, most notably one of Beyonce's signature hits, Crazy in Love, which became the first smash hit of her solo career. While A. Marie was about to have the smash hit of her career as well, it didn't come easily. Her label consistently rejected the song that is known as One Thing, which was her lead single. They felt it wasn't strong enough, even after A. Marie and her producer did multiple revisions, and it led to her taking matters into her own hands and leaking the song to radio. Still, it almost seems like her label was trying to backdoor her because Jennifer Lopez wanted to record the song. However, A. Marie's song was just so irresistible, there was absolutely no stopping the fire it had set, even though her label did try. Jennifer Lopez would have to settle with a reworked Usher scrap that would become one of her biggest hits known as Get Right that was also produced and written by Rich Harrison. Despite her initial obstacles, one thing would become A. Marie's biggest hit, launching to global success across the charts and becoming a top 10 hit for her in the States. It is one of the best and most instantaneously catchy songs of the 2000s decade. <laughs> her second album, Touch, was released in 2005, and it is certainly a bit stronger than some of the material her peers were putting out then. It's a go-go album, but she utilizes her voice in varying forms on the album with her voice being enveloped in the production. And you can see how the sound of this record seeped into some of her peers. She would even drop a diss track aimed at people she felt ran to scoop up her sound. She says, six months and y'all done checked my style, thinking I was MIA, that switchful thinking child. It's obvious to see, chickens try to bite it, but they can't cop my delivery, my style, my aggression on the track. When y'all chicks know y'all wasn't singing like that, so let me break it down for you, to the ground for you. Go and chase that track, pay a hundred stack, but you can't buy my sound, can't take my flow, can't take my swag. So she was clearly fed up. 
Unfortunately, A. Marie got caught in a lot of industry politics, where she was pushed to the side. And this is something that happened to many ex during this time, like Sierra, Christina Milian, Tierra Marie, and it even almost happened to Rihanna. Mm -hmm. A lot of label shuffling and singers getting dropped during this period. A. Marie's label did not properly support her third and final album on their roster. The album is known as Because I Love It, released in 2007. After many delays, it was met with the best reviews of her career. Although she had moderate success with the singles in the UK and parts of Europe, it was not released or promoted in the States, where A. Marie had achieved the bulk of her success, which obviously set her back commercially. She would then switch labels. The label switch resulted in her 2009 album, In Love and War. And she eventually left that label as well, opting for the independent route. And she's released multiple EPs since then that have been well received <laughs> by critics. Present day, she is also a YouTuber. Her channel primarily focuses on books. She runs a book club and still pops out every now and then to perform her classes. One thing has been continuously lauded since its release, not only by publications, but also internet culture. With a hit as popular as One Thing, she is surely memorialized into thousands pop culture. She came into the game, bought some new styles and aesthetics, and the label life just wasn't for her. She marched to the beat of her own drum, and that's what she's continued to do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that was a good one. We always enjoy honest videos, as well as um, I just watched the Don Angela video, who was kind of similar. And then I think the next video I'm getting ready to watch is um, an Ali Talks video. Um, yeah, because we love music documentaries, for real. But A. Marie is somebody, um, I say this to y'all often, I was super young um, at that time. But like the songs that came on the radio, of course you knew, we knew Why Don't We Fall In Love, we knew one thing. As I said in one of the Jennifer Lopez videos I watched, um, I could not imagine anyone else singing that song but her. <laughs> so it's crazy to hear that story about the label one, disliking it, but then two, trying to give it to someone else. That's crazy as hell to me. Um, but then also in, what video was it that I just watched? I think yesterday or the day before. Um, the Blue Cantrell video I watched. They talked about how B had a song with Sean Paul that was similar to Blues. And I kind of mentioned Amory in that video. Because, again, she just worked with the same producer. I don't think it's an attempt to steal the style. I think the producer just, that's his, that became a sound for him. And he kind of passed it to the next one and the next one. Um, but then the, the politics of the industry will make someone believe that, hey, Beyonce intentionally went after her sound. Um, and I could be reaching, you know, maybe she did intentionally go out after her sound. We don't know what went on in the background. But um, I like the point that he made about people getting pushed to the side because, um, yeah, like th those, the ones he listed, I'm thinking to myself, them people really did fight. And they were just as talented. It was just really tough and competitive um, at that time to, I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> but shout out to the fact that like Sierra and Rihanna were able to continue going and Rihanna became Rihanna um, very fast as well. But this is a good one. Amory is, in my opinion, incredibly talented. I definitely loved her EPs that came out in 2018. Um, the ones that are like 4 a.m. themed, I can't remember the actual names, there's two of them. But they had some some bops on them like um, Curious, Don't Say a Word. Um, yeah, um, yeah. every time I want to think, it's the one song I love in particular on those EPs, I can never think of the name of it, but then I go listen to it, and I love it. They were pretty good. They were really, really dope. So, you know, she definitely remained consistent. I liken her to like a Maya when it comes to like the way she continued to drop music despite people maybe not seeing it as big. But um, I would love to see a documentary on Maya too. I might have to go look for one. Because I'm, again, I was super young, so I wasn't as in tune with what was going on. But as an adult, I'm like, oh damn, their career is stalled and, and you know, something had to have happened. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you thought about this one below. Are you an Amory fan? What's your favorite Amory song? What's your, fav what's your favorite album? Um, suggest some songs I should go listen to by her other than the ones that I know. <laughs> but yes, comment, like, subscribe. Until next time, peace.